Joseph, Europe finds itself in a very frightening situation this Monday. And the first thing on everyone's mind is hoping for some reconciliation between Russia and the Ukraine. But anyone who is invested in any way in Russia is, of course, thinking about that part of their exposure in their portfolio. And in particular, if you're invested in Russia, you are almost, by definition, invested in Gazprom, which is particularly exposed to the Ukraine. So tell me what's happening to the shares today. Yeah, like you said, if you own Russian equities, you own Gazprom. It's 25% of the local index. Gazprom shares themselves uh, fell as much as about 17% uh, today. Uh, you know, went back to around 13%, so still this is a big loss. Mm. Um, and yet this is the problem which Gazprom and its European customers have, you know, for a very long time feared and to some extent prepared for, which is instability in right. Ukraine. Those of us who sort of naively think about this stock, think about a couple of things. We think it's really cheap because yeah. of the geopolitical risks. It has been cheap for a long time. It got a lot cheaper today. But they also think of it as just a big fat pipe that runs from Russia through the Ukraine and to Europe, specifically places like Italy and Germany and so forth. Is that simple-minded way of thinking about this company correct? No, it's, I mean, you know, like a company which is on about 2.4 times forward earnings. Like mm -hmm. you say, it's cheap, and yet it supplies about 30% of European demand for natural gas. Mm -hmm. uh, the caveat to what you just said, though, is that it's not one big pipeline. There is a big pipeline which does go through Ukraine, and yet there are others which people are probably thinking about today. There's a pipeline which goes through Belarus and Poland, which kind of sidetracks Ukraine a bit, called the Yamal pipeline, and that comes straight from you know uh, Gazprom's Western Siberian gas fields. The only issue is it's much smaller uh, right. in terms of capacity than the one that goes through Ukraine. And politically, the Belarus is no picnic. Oh, no, exactly. Right. I mean, they, they've they've had issues there before. Mm. You know, very similar to Ukraine. You know, stuff goes through. Uh, there's a debate over trans, trans, transit fees and so on. Now, and this is obviously why you know other pipelines are now exist or are in construction, such as Nord Stream, right. which you know came online you know relatively recently this decade, and you know, can take some of the load off again of that reliance on Ukraine. But then you have stuff like South Stream, which goes through the Black Sea and you know under the sea pretty much, and that will take some time to build and will be costly. So where is just quickly? Where is Gazprom left and where is Europe left if the Ukraine pipeline is really threatened or even is effectively closed for some small or large period of time? Well, you know, Gazprom you know, is still you know, developing these pipeline alternatives, but in the meantime, it has to think about pricing because that's the other long-term problem here, which is, you know, it still index its pricing to oil prices. The Europeans increasingly want their gas linked to spot prices which are cheaper so that won't go away but then you know the Europeans will be looking at Ukraine and thinking it's yeah we want uh, good prices for our gas but we also want diversity of supply mm. so if you look at like, a country like Poland for example which is where Gazprom would very much like to you know extend the that Yamal pipeline for us you know like a second they're going through more of Europe the Polish think, well, maybe we should just instead have liquefied natural gas terminals on our coasts, taking Qatari gas rather than Russian gas, and maybe we should develop our own shale gas resources over the longer term. That is something Gazprom should not underrate. Right. So what we have is a political situation that over the long term could change the supply dynamics in Europe. Yeah. Thanks, Joseph.